At the age of 20, I broke my leg in a skateboarding accident, and like nearly 14 million other young adults, I didn't have health care. Well, it's been six years, and I'm still paying for it today. I went out to find out why so many of us don't have health care, and if there was anything that we could do to get these people to listen. I was insured with my uh, parents' insurance uh, up until I turned 24. It just it ran out. It expired under my dad uh, when I turned 23. Yeah, I didn't have insurance uh, in between jobs or after I graduated college and started my first job. The job don't give it, so I mean, I'm trying to you know, find a way to get it, and then if I think if I go get it, it might cost too much that it won't fit my budget of trying to get it. It comes as a big problem of the cost. I'm not working full time, so how, how could I even afford it? I am not working right now and I couldn't afford it. So if you go without health insurance, you're, you're, you may have a catastrophic event that happens in your life. You might have an auto accident or some terrible illness or cancer or something else that's really quite uh, damaging both physically and then economically can be a disaster also. Um, obesity, pregnancy, HIV AIDS, believe it or not, congenital heart disease strikes more people in the 19 to 29 year um, age bracket than, than some other age groups. I actually didn't have anything wrong with me until I, it expired and then all of a sudden I did need like medical insurance like really bad because I had all these things going wrong at once and I had to get on birth control. You know when you're in your early 20s it's not something you really worry about. You feel pretty indestructible I think. Contrary to popular belief that young people choose not to be insured because they're young and invincible, when offered health insurance from their employers, more than 70% accept it and take it up. If it would be possible to increase the eligibility age for young adults when they leave college or they leave home so that they can be insured under their family policy, say up to the age of 21 or 22 or 23, that would be a way of decreasing the number of uninsured in a fairly dramatic way and for and a fairly low cost. The healthcare companies need to create plans that are targeted to young people. Adding you into the risk pool for health insurance actually has the potential of lowering premiums for everybody else. The most recent information shows that during the first four years of George Bush's presidency, the number of uninsured young adults rose nearly two and a half million people. Really, we need to have a groundswell saying, change the rules, you know, fix this problem, it's an easy fix. There's legislation out there, you can grab a, a model, a piece of model legislation from an existing state and just get a group of young people together, go meet with your, you know, the legislator you think would be the appropriate one, and you'll get action. You know, uh, democracy is not a spectator sport. You have to be engaged and involved. And the issues that tend to get the most attention in the legislature, whether it's the state legislature or at the national level, are the issues that people feel passionate about and let their voice be heard. So it sounds cliche to say, write your member of Congress, write your state legislators, sign up to come testify, but it's truly those personal stories um, that connect people legislators into making positive changes on a, on a policy level. It's all pushed back onto the government because they are not trying to make it a mandatory thing for those who don't have it. And when you don't make it mandatory for those who don't have it, then really you say you really don't care if they live or die.